come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Once more, we are with you. We are controlling everything we do here right now on the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. <laughs> We are Who you. are these? We, are we used to be mere mortals, but we were transformed through exposure to some kind of alien thing into internet radio superstars, including Holly, <laughs> Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. At least I think I am. Uh, are oh, you? shit. Let's Let me see pass. your fillings. Oh, yeah. Let me <laughs> see your teeth. Open your mouth. Let me see your teeth. <laughs> uh, so we watch movies, we talk about them. It's like a book club for movies. Tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. You didn't sound confident that it was chosen by Sean. <laughs> <laughs> like we're all out of sorts. Because <laughs> somehow oh. things got flipped around and we're like, you don't even know we who are. Yeah. I don't know. We are others. We are. Not I'm not, not lying. I had to look up <laughs> to see who was sitting uh, in front in of me. <laughs> Sean. Well, what did we watch tonight, Sean? Uh, the Thing. Which one? Ah, from 2011. There it is. There we go. The newest thing. (laughs) Don't get too excited. You got excited. (laughs) Wow. Well, why not? I mean, maybe it's Uh, a fantastic movie. Listener, if you haven't seen it, you're going to have to stick with us. So this is a prequel to the 1982 classic Classic. directed by John Carpenter Mm -hmm. called The Thing, which is a remake Mm -hmm. Of a 1951 movie produced by Howard Hawks Mm -hmm. entitled Mm -hmm. The Thing from Another World. There you go. Mm -hmm. Which is based on a story written by Joseph Campbell. Campbell. Is it it John Campbell? John W. Campbell. Joseph, I think it's Joseph W. Campbell. How far can we go? Which was based on a dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, he had, yeah. <laughs> that he told Called, his therapist who about there? who yeah. was like, I'm going to yeah. write that into a screenplay. Yeah. Well, it is amazing how much the uh, the thing, the legacy of John Carpenter's movie has like reached out in, especially in the last and twenty years. Around. <laughs> well, there's also there's uh, there's two sequels to the '82 movie. There's a comic book, and there's a video game. Well, the video game was quite popular oh, right, back in right. the Xbox days. I think John right. Carpenter's in it, you know, oh. as uh, Dr. Faraday. There's a strategy board game now, too. That's right. Outpost 31. Yeah. yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. I don't I, I Is that a sequel? Yeah. Or is that just like you are in it's, the... You're just like in the world, I think. I, I, I struggled to understand the gameplay of it because it was very Friends complicated. Have that. So. I'm going to convince them yeah. to be like, let's, let's play this. Let's bust, bust this out. How many hours do you have? That's the thing. Yeah, it's pretty hard to play. So. It's not... It's it's not your straightforward board game. It's then why the fuck would anyone play it? Because people love the, that thing. movie that it much. Sounds mm-hmm. awful. Yeah. It sounds awful. Well, it is one of the greatest. Okay, so it's the is same it... reason people play D and D. It's just that same level. It's like yeah. the same level of complicated right. as D. So it's just something. That it's just something regularly. that I will, won't understand. I get it. It's, I don't understand. That's or not you my don't thing. Want to understand. It's not my thing. <laughs> and that's, and that's it's fine. not my that's thing. Fine. I you know I I understand that. Have to be your thing. Yeah, I understand that's people's hobbies. People are saying go for thing a lot. Is that intentional? That's happen Unintentional? A lot. Yep. It's yeah. because we say it all the time anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it just happens to be a pun tonight. Is that- <laughs> well, um, so Carpenter's movie is, uh, is that John Carpenter's best movie? Well, I mean, I think this side of the table, mm-hmm. being Sean and I are going to say no, Halloween's his best movie, but I think the thing is a very, very close second, if not tied for first. It might, uh, I think it might be tied for first. Yeah. Because that's a fucking... That's a fucking great movie. Yeah. It, yeah, I wouldn't even say it's with that one's better than the other. They're just different flavors. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Say, like, I don't think they're things, yeah. doing different things. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll agree. I'll agree. Can't with say that. one's better than the other. Mm-hmm. He's probably like, fuck. He did two of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he did fuck. it twice. He fuck, did you twice. did it twice. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Bravo. You brilliant genius man. You did it twice. Do we owe it to him or do we owe it to Rob Bottin? Well, this is a good question, question because mm-hmm. the, uh, I mean, that was what made the the 82 thing like this um you know anomaly in horror movies was the uh, fact that it didn't have a clearly defined creature mm. like there was no like sing, like this is what the actual creature right, looks no like actual thing original thing yeah because it's it's cool i mean this is like what makes it one of the great movie monsters right it's like it can be like it has been absorbing 
and reshaping itself to look like any of how many thousands of species right. of alien that creatures come in contact with. Yeah, over the years. So every every time you're seeing it, it's like it's got like the leg of one of them and the you know the tooth of another one right. and the eyeball of some five else. heads coming out of something else that mm-hmm. it sure. absorbed earlier on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had we've never seen the original thing. Although the the 1951 movie ops for like a Frankenstein it's type monster. Man. That was the first thing movie I ever oh, saw. Yeah. Was the fifty one one? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, my dad loves that movie, so mm-hmm. it's a good movie. Yeah, it's fun. I haven't seen. I got to go I've see that. The, I, yeah, the thing that is in the movie, but I've never seen the movie. I've never yeah, seen the movie. Check it out. It's that's a pretty my good next step after tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's got that kind of rap, rapid fire nineteen fifties era, you know, dialogue. Mm-hmm. There's a right. fire stunt in that movie mm-hmm. that like defies safety categories. <laughs> oh, like you're like, I'm, oh yeah. my god, that guy's actually on fire. Yeah. Well, like they're just they they splash like uh gasoline on a guy who's on fire and it goes all over the room and i'm like you can see the top it's a small room (laughs) and there's a a person like behind a uh like a mattress and i'm like you just threw fire on that person i'm like oh jesus christ yeah it's well, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta see it. It's amazing. Yeah. I will say the one thing that always sticks in my mind about that movie is they talk about how he's a plant based alien. So mm-hmm. the, and at one point in the movie, someone's like, So he's basically a frozen vegetable. And like, that's the point, that, <laughs> part that always sticks in my head from that oh, movie. He's like a snow pea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. It's hard to take it seriously. After it is that. hard. Bird's yeah, Eye presents the thing to another world. <laughs> <laughs> it is very different from the John Carpenter movie, that's yes. for sure. Yeah. Very Bird's different. Eye. Well, because the, 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 the difference is, is the, the 51 movie is, uh, you know, all of these people trying to work together against a common enemy, mm. where Carpenter's version introduces this paranoia. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where you don't know who's who. Somehow, like, your close-knit uh, group has been invaded by this organism. You can't tell who's who now, and so nobody trusts anybody. Mm-hmm. How do you survive in that situation? Mm-hmm. So, in 2011... That's a very different version of that. They're not going for the paranoia, Colin. It's a monster movie. In 2011? In 2011. Okay, so let's, uh, let's. I would argue you did some research on this. Where did this movie come from? Why do we all of a sudden have a, a thing prequel uh, slash remake? Because our director was in the middle of, and I forgot the fucking project, and it was something known, but he was in the middle of developing his own project to do for his first movie, and it got scrapped three months before production was about to start, and so they were looking through. Uh, once I got scrapped, he was like, so, I don't know, it's for Universal. Is Does the thing happen to be available? Like, are they planning on doing anything of that? And apparently they were. And so he attached himself or he, like, the he hubris, got into doing that. The yeah. fucking hubris of that. He got into doing that. Crazy. And so they decided to, uh, they were looking at a remake at Universal. And I think it was, the director is uh, Mathis and I forget his Von, last, Von Vj- 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 Is he Yang. Swedish or Norwegian? Norwegian. Or is he like Norwegian? I, I don't know his uh, yeah. origin, mm-hmm. but he is, yeah. And this is his first film. First film, last film. Yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah. He's you only, don't yeah. Say. I think he's only done either uh, music videos and shorts and stuff after this. Interesting. Yeah, this is the last. He reversed David Finchard? Basically, yeah. Because <laughs> he did shorts beforehand, and then he just was developing other projects with Universal, because apparently he was a, a hot property, and his plan got scrapped, Why? and so they put him on the thing. Why was he a hot property? Uh, You're saying I he guess, hasn't done anything, but short, but before, but just because of the stuff that he had showed before. It's it's like, you know, the the independent directors nowadays, they do one right. indie but like movie. A, you and do one short, a and that makes you a hot I, I mean, that was the thing back then. I think shorts got you work mm. back in Israel. But then his own project got scrapped, even though he was a hot property? Yeah. I mean, they'll do that. Right, and so he had the hubris to be like, "Can I make remake the thing?" Yeah, and they said, the "Yeah." They're like, "Yeah, sure." Well, I assume he had a take on it, which yeah. that's the thing probably that sold because if, uh, well, I mean, the concept. I mean, I'll admit the concept when I heard it, you know, it was like, okay, yeah. you know, you sold me. I'll check this movie. Right. Out. If you're gonna do it, they picked the they went with the concept that's just like, 
Well, that's what you would do. Yeah. It feels like that's what you would do. Just in the log yeah. line, I'm saying, yeah. you know, m m you know, not necessarily in the, the construction the, of the thing. Or the execution, but yeah. 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 But the idea that he came up with, so this is, it's back in the, the remake craze of the uh, the mid-2000s to the whatever, mm -hmm. right? Till now? I was like, so now, that we haven't left yet? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have not left that phase. Yeah, 2011, <laughs> we were still doing it. So that's what they wanted to do, to remake the thing. And he said, you know what you do? You don't remake, you remake it as a prequel. You mm -hmm. basically take the story structure of the 82 thing, but we're going to show you what happened at the Norwegian camp because all it's these all years it. it's been burning like in the back of my mind, like what did the thing do? At the Norwegian camp before Kurt Russell. So you're and his saying team they gave you exactly it. what you wanted, Colin. What you thought you wanted, <laughs> or what you thought sounded like a good idea. I mean, once I mean, you... I think this is most people like this. No, it could, it could, yeah, be. because it could be something. The, the advance word was that this Thomas, Thomas, Mattis, direct, Mattis, Mattis. This Mattis character was like a massive fan of the thing mm -hmm. and he like was gonna end up like tying all of the stuff that you saw when McCready and the doc go through the Norwegian camp he's gonna have a reason where all of it how all of it got there yep I'm like okay like, sure. all right all right but, that's cool but that's but not bad yet seen the, the, the 1982 thing and you've seen what happens at the American camp can't you just extrapolate that that's probably what happened at the Norwegian camp too like well, why do you need specifics to, but like you've seen it happen once do you need to see the exact same thing happen just in a different location Yes. I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't I mean, be the same it. thing, it, maybe, but, but yeah. that oh, right. is, you know, then you settle into this movie and it's like, it's a remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is a remake. Oh, yeah. it, is not, it has not earned that prequel yeah. status no. at all. Yeah. Because he burns Tormund right next to the bookcase. I expected him to start yeah. kicking his the legs. little feet yeah. go. Yeah. 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 I'm like, oh. When we were watching it tonight, Sean and I, we were shouting out lines from the uh, the 82 movie right. at, at the, the moments moment. that it would yeah. happen yep. in this movie. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what's the setup for this movie? What? How do we How do we get to the Norwegian base? Well, I think the Norwegians have apparently uh, heard a signal coming from somewhere. They're all in the Antarctic, of course. Um, and they've heard a signal. They've they've come across it over their radio, and so they're trying to track it down. And they do. And where do they end up, Colin? Where do you end up? You end up at the spaceship. Yep. That landed on Earth one hundred thousand years, years ago, ago. Mm. and it threw the. Uh, and they, know, how, I'm sorry, I might have missed it, but did they say how they knew it landed a hundred thousand years ago? They were judging based by on, like permafrost. Yeah, yeah. basically, because I think they even mentioned that in the '82 version okay. as well. well the '82 like based version, based on the ice that it's in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the '82 version, the thing's sitting in like a basin, and the dude can tell through like whatever the backfill yeah. or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. this ice, I'd say, is a hundred thousand years old. Right. And this one, yeah, what is just another yet another geologist or something? Sure. Yeah. It's like, the, yeah, like I said, I think I might have just missed it, but because it because it was probably mumbled like everything else in this fucking movie. It so was. I didn't catch it was. Up, <laughs> I didn't pick up on it. So. Yeah. You're exactly right, but so. that ship's the size of like a fucking football field too. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's big. It's huge. Well, the Norwegians are unequipped to deal with this, so they send back to uh, Columbia University. I guess, yeah, it seems like, yeah. Because they need a, uh, sorry, what was she? Arche she's an archaeologist of sorts. She's got special specializations in other things, but yeah, she's she digs up. She's an archaeologist? Poking at a dead like dog? A, yeah, I think she was a doctor well, yeah, something of some that she pulled out of the ice. She specializes <laughs> yeah. in pulling things out of the ice and being able to study okay. them and all that yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. I think is her thing. Was it a dead dog? I thought it was a dinosaur. It was it the was dog from the be, 1982 thing. It is, technically. It's, it's, the, oh, was it? it's the an prop. actual prop yeah. from the 1982 yeah. one. It's supposed to be a frozen bear. From yeah. the was it? It looked like a dog. I totally thought it was a dinosaur. No, it was supposed to be a frozen bear. Like a, you know. Yeah. R whatever Asic bear. Sure, no. Yeah. Asic. <laughs> whatever Asic. Whatever Asic. Yeah, whatever Jurassic. Asic bear she pulled out of the ice. All right, is what yeah, she's no. Studying. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> so she's an expert on this stuff, so I need right. someone to come and dig it up. Apparently, she seems, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't think they necessarily need her. Um, well, this is it, uh, Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who has uh, gone on to do fantastic things? Well, she, I mean, she hovers she around. She was hot at this time, mm -hmm. but she also seems to be attached to like genre stuff. You oh, know, for I sure. mean, like sure. uh, Scott Pilgrim and mm -hmm. this and the uh, Death Proof and yes. Ten Cloverfield know. Lane. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah exactly. Which mm -hmm. she gets because she's like, you know, when you think of like, well, who are we going to put in in this, you know, genre movie? Mary Elizabeth Wins. Obviously, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like her. 
Mm-hmm. I think she's a good actress. I like what she does. I don't. Mm, I can't agree with any no. of that. No, no, no. All right. I don't think she's good I, at all. She is not leading lady material. And in this not movie, I was like, well, what the fuck are you bit. doing in this I don't movie? Think so. Well, I mean, she does. I think she's Incapable good. I think of she's showing emotion. Stuff, yeah. But I don't also. But think about it. Scott Pilgrim was the same thing. She didn't show any emotion in that movie either. Yeah. This I mean, one's the same thing. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I've seen her in so stuff too. where she does it. So, I mean, she does. she's really good in the third season of uh, Fargo. I'm just about to start that. Oh, yeah, and so I'm she's very, really good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, so she can, but it's that's why I was like, when, when watching this movie tonight, I was like, you know, because you guys were sitting there, you're like, she's not reacting like at all. Yeah. And it's like, because it's that, the whole, like, now we're too cool to have anybody screaming in horror or actually being... Being yeah. afraid, I'm which even, I think that yeah, makes it's the not even audience just hurt. It's any, it's nope. I know. Reacts yeah, they just kind of all just, like it's yeah. this awe of uh, how would you describe it? Like they're they're so scared. Mild they, shock. shock. Yeah, it's yeah, mild right. shock. shock throughout yeah. the entire yeah. movie. They're like but so like, much so, shock they don't yeah. accept anything that is happening before them. They're right. like solemn the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just like yeah. speaking in a hushed whisper and mumbling throughout yeah. this whole movie. No one has any and like I mean I think she it's most obvious with her because she's the lead so you see her the most sure. but yeah. everyone's doing it. Everyone's yeah, and it's not like, having and any emotion. And it's not even like that they're not giving you the screams they're not giving you those horror moments They're they're just not Panicking, they're not reacting like people would react at all. No, not it's, at all. At all, I think they're not talking like people would talk. Like, no, just, they're not. It's always they're not. just like a it, scientist would never say we must rely on science. Would never say it <laughs> ever. Well, it, it, I think the most scientists have emotion as well. Like, come on. I think the most emotion we saw bit. in this movie with. <laughs> It was when Eric Christian Olsen said, what are you, some kind of asshole? Like, he screamed yeah. that, but that was, like, the most... Hey, what are, are you, an asshole? Some kind of asshole? Yeah. Like, that was the Fantastic. that was like the most emotion yeah. anyone showed in their voice speaking in this entire movie. Yeah, it's like they were all given directions. Yeah. Like, this is how he was you're supposed more, to be, he was rather more, than how you're supposed to react. He was more shocked that someone would be an asshole than mm-hmm. cells that weren't dead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. saying. Well, I'm, yep. I'm also curious if, you know, we don't know how many takes were done. If there was a take where she did this, a take where they, she did that, and like this is the one that he chose, because you know, I mean, it yeah. is a director's medium, and they go with you know, I want it to feel like this. This is the more dour, like you know, spookier version. The of more boring well, it's version. Definitely the more dour. <laughs> it's the more spooky. Mm. It's definitely mm. not the more spooky. No. Boring. Boring. Mm. Well, it's like might be on something what, there. What was the line at the end? We were talking a lot about like we're gonna find it and then we're gonna kill it. Is what she says, we're right? Yeah. We're gonna kill and but like she she throws it away so much at the end that you can barely even hear the last half of that sentence. Mm-hmm. I honestly didn't even touch it. Yeah. she. It's it's yeah. supposed to be something that, like, they would, like, push in on Kurt Russell. He'd, like, cock a gun and be like, we're gonna find it and we're gonna kill it. And you'd be like, fuck it! Yes! That's what we want! Yeah. And, like, in this movie, she's like... we're just like, fuck yeah, Kurt Russell! Yeah, yeah. And this one, she's just like, yeah. Fuck you, too! He did it. He delivered that line. Yeah, yelled things. Yeah. He actually... He had an attitude towards this thing. Yes! There's no attitude in this movie. No, nobody Kurt Russell did this. Nobody Kurt Russell did this. Nobody! I think that's the problem. You flamethrowers! Yeah. Come on! Get a fucking attitude! Come on! There's, Everyone's just wide eyed and just huh, yeah. There's no, like, no uh, they aren't. Central... They aren't wide eyed. Well, I mean, Tormund was wide eyed, but that's his natural <laughs> right. look. That's that's, that's just, just how he looks. How he looked, yeah. yeah, he was beardy too. That's just how yeah. he looks. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, recognizable faces in this movie. Too many. Too no. no I don't think Exa- not enough. It, no yeah. uh, recognizable faces. Not enough people. Too many. Yeah, okay. too many people. All right, all right, all right. Break people. that down. Break that down. I agree with that. Well, because it always because we get to a point I where we're doing. I couldn't name more than three people in this. Well, movie. right? Could not. not. Mostly because they're all they're Norwegian, and yeah. we're just like I'm not going to be able to keep track. I was of like, that well, at least to one's going to be na- at least one's going to be named Lars. We know that. Right. Yep. But when, <laughs> when we get down to scenes like when we're supposed to do testing, all that stuff, mm-hmm. there's too many people wandering around Way to bring many. in and separating all that stuff. Like we need to s- simplify it at a certain point, which we. They don't do. No. There's just too many people. No, it's like, the. I mean, even the, the, the amount of people they have at the camp, like, I cannot imagine that this takes place in the same universe as the first movie. Exactly. Even though yeah. it's working as hard as it can to connect the dots. So by yeah. the time this right. movie's over, there's a dude on a plane, or a, bl- and a plane, in a helicopter chasing a yeah. uh, wolf, right. dog, whatever, yes. across the, uh, the icy tundra. But... The clearly the Norwegian camp is much more advanced than the yes. what we saw of the American yeah. camp. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Yeah, the Norwegian camp feels new, like they just got people in. Whereas yeah. the American camp feels like they've been there for a long time <laughs> and they've... they're tired of this bullshit. Yeah. yeah, and Joel Edgerton is in this movie. Joel yes. Edgerton's in this movie. Yes, yeah. he is uh, yes. an actor who I usually like. 
Well, Usually, he, yeah. And he, he does, I mean, he no, does he, a I, good job. I, I mean, he never registers for me. No. Like, he's one of those actors that, like, I know I've seen in a million things, but I just really? see right through him. I, he never registers for me. Oh, I like him. Unless, I, unless I he's too. making yeah. a really bad choice, like an Exodus, Gods and Kings yeah, situation. Yeah, that's right. I was going to like... Like, yeah. like, I can't... That's yeah. what I immediately think of when I think I, of him. I'm no, like, I loved him in, uh, I loved him in Warrior and The Great Gatsby. He was great in both of those. The Gift? Did he write and direct The Gift? I think he definitely directed The Gift and starred in. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. And he does, he does good. And he, he's uh, lately, I think, period pieces because he did uh, Black Mass, the Giant Depp movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's good in that too. Yeah. yeah, no, he's yeah, good. I like him. He's okay, but he's just like I don't know. He's not like a movie star. No, that's what I'm saying. Not. Like that's why I forget about him because, like you said, he's in Great Gatsby. Like I, I think of four <laughs> other actors first before I think of him. Well, yeah, probably since we're talking about this yeah. tonight, people are going like, "Oh shit, that's right, he was in that movie." Yeah, that's exactly. how you react to Joel Edgerton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just like, "Oh shit, he's in this." Oh, yeah. cool. Like, oh yeah, and then you forget as soon as it's over. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you yeah, get to he's... the next Joel Edgerton movie. You're like, oh shit, he's in this. He's mm-hmm. just That's fine. Cool. He's just yeah. fine. He's just fine. <laughs> yeah, um, but everyone's just fine. So there's a lot of people at this base. They find the signal for this uh, buried, you know, alien ship. Mm-hmm. They go out there. They carve uh, the survivor, the alien, the thing out, and bring it back mm-hmm. to the replica version. Of how we first saw this thing in the eighty two yes. version. Yes. And what I they... know what you're thinking, Encino Man. Yes. Oh exactly the same. Exactly all? the same. I wish. Yes. I mm. wish that was the direction this movie went. The razor just came out with claws. Yeah. Like like don't lose the juice. Oh my god, I would yeah. love that. How great yeah, how great <laughs> a twist would have been if you thought you were going in for a hardcore thing remake and then it just turns into like this ridiculous yeah. comedy. Like it would have like, been the greatest. Because I'd be, no, I'd be great because we'd be like Brendan Fraser's back. Yeah. 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 Yes. Make Brendan Fraser great again. Yes. yes. And, and the that. and the scientist they go to bring in for this is Polly Shore. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Uh, it's like this, oh. uh, it's like my worst nightmare. That's <laughs> yeah, a terrible, it. terrible, terrible idea. Um, so, but here's the th- here's like the first problem I guess that I have with because the initial setup, yeah, we got to go and you know get this scientist to come back with us. Even though we're all scientists, we need a paleontologist yeah. or whatever yeah. to help us with these uh, remains. You have the asshole doctor. Uh, I'm not sure the actor's name, but I think maybe I've seen him in something before. Yeah, it feels yeah. like it. But Sander. he's the uh, Sander, Sander, right? So yeah. he's the, uh, the in charge of this thing. Mm-hmm. So they all get back there and they're digging, you know, whatever, getting the core samples out of the the big ice block that we've seen in the in the other movie. And then uh, one night when the camp is off celebrating the fact that they found alien life, the thing just jumps up out of the ice. But not until after. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, black actor. Uh, oh, okay. I, I can't. I don't know Akinale, his last name, but Akinale, you've seen him in okay. everything. At all, lost. What's the character? He's been in Lost. Name, he's been in Oz. He was in. He's been in tons the of stuff. Born Identity. He was in GI Joe. Was he? Just, yeah, he was oh, in no. G.I. Joe, yeah. You're just naming what lots of things char- I haven't Do seen. Do we know what his character's name was? In this? Yeah. Absolutely not. I don't think they ever said it, did they? Carl. Which is the problem. Because yeah. there's too many people. Yeah, exactly. Too many people. But Most of them white Norwegian dudes. And I'm just like, all right. They all look the same. They all look the same. I can't all tell the same. them apart. Yeah. Just like, oh, you're not differentiating yourselves. But I know him and you know the actor. You know what would have really helped? Just put patches on their jackets with their names on them. Something. That would have been It's so easy. And it makes so- yeah, and let's make that a little easier as yeah. well. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> give me a Kurt. Right? They're Norwegian. Give me a Kurt. They're Norwegian. Well, then yeah. you're calling back to the 1982 version too. Just do it. Yeah, Just that do is it. a good point. Name them all after the actors, not the characters. The just, actors yeah, in the first time. That's not a bad idea. Okay that, yeah. Even if it's like you're just like, I see what you're doing, but that it sticks helps. with you and it yeah. helps. We could at least be talking about them and I wouldn't have to say things like black actor because I don't right. know what, what that character's name a, was. he's yeah. the only black actor in yeah. the movie? Yeah. And this is his only moment, really? Right, because they're going for the like, well, we need one black actor because the child, because Childs, we had the mm-hmm. first one. Yeah. So we need one black actor at least yeah. because that's what they're doing. They're, they, they're, they also had Nalls in the first one. Let's not forget the legendary, I can't remember his name now, but he was in Punky Brewster. Yep. That, no, that helps. That's... <laughs> He was the that cook. Was, no, no, we didn't mm-hmm. watch. I didn't watch Brewster. a lot of Punky yeah. Brewster. Okay, yeah. but he was in the thing. That's your generation, Colin. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I remember a little Punky Brewster. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So. The, yep. How yeah, this yeah, thing? Exactly. So exactly. they yeah. need to get the thing out of the ice for a story point of view. I get it. Right. Yeah, like sure. Certain things have to happen. Yeah, yeah. You have to have it like scooped out because that's the way the guys find it in the other movie. Yep. But. 
I'm like, this defies all logic, right? I mean, well, unless you can help me point, out on this. At what point does it start defying logic? Yeah, right where, there. Where do you, where do you get That they out? get it out of the ice? Well, yeah, because somehow they use some cutting tools. We don't see how they actually cut right, it out. We don't see them out. using the thermite charges to blow open the, uh, which is, you know, what the Kurt Russell and the guys, they're watching the videotapes of that, right? Oh, right, right, right. In, in the other movie, yeah. that doesn't happen in this. No. Uh, but they cut the thing, the block out with the alien in it, bring it back home, and then I'm like, how does he? How do you get leverage? The, you know, you're frozen in a block of ice. I don't know. I don't get to it. jump out to jump out yeah, yeah, and go yeah. running no, around the camp. The Not just jump out, but jump through the the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Uh, up, n- yeah. who knows how high? Right. Like, there uh, shouldn't it shouldn't be a straight up into the ceiling. There should be like a breakout. Yeah, and then a movement, yeah. then or like a slow, like, like tremble, some yeah, resistance, and then going up. Mm-hmm. Like no. the, the ice starts to like shiver like an earthquake, and then it cracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's going to splinter yeah. all yeah. 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 something. It just Things, doesn't go right. shock effect, right. boom. But that's it. Yeah. They're just like, what's going to surprise people at this point? We had the, yeah. the jump fake scares. jump scare. We had the fake one. Now we have to do the real one, mm-hmm. where it just jumps out and goes straight up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what they're and, going and, for in this. And I, I understand your logic, what you're thinking. Like, why doesn't this happen? But at the same time, I'm like, alien monster. I don't really need. A how to here, but like, alien monster. It's the timing of it more than anything that drives me crazy because, yeah. like, it's as soon as like the black actor comes and looks at it and turns his back, <laughs> yeah, then it does it. Like, mm-hmm. why it's been here for a hundred thousand years and didn't do this? Maybe yeah. that's the moment it woke up. How can it doesn't, yeah, subtlety is not <laughs> the yeah. point of this movie, yeah, yeah. It, it, because just, there could have been a really cool, creepy way of that thing coming out of the ice, yeah, yeah they there get it been. out, they, they thaw it out, yeah. and then it wakes up because it's thawed out, and really there's still cellular activity. This has exactly. all been laid out in yeah. the, the template, the original mm-hmm. uh, yeah. thing yeah. movie. They gave you they gave you all the building blocks, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they gave it to you. but they got to get the thing out and running around the camp and doing crazy things. So, here's my next question, yeah, because it becomes a monster movie, yes. Uh, and this thing is unlike the thing in the '82 movie. Is not really shy about just running around and right being the thing, being the thing, yeah, and yeah. Being, a, being a monster. And since this is post Cloverfield era, everything's got to have spidery scorpion legs. That's like every monster in this yeah. time is like mm-hmm. got to be this weird alien crab looking thing. Well, to be fair, that precedent was set in the original movie, True, but it, it stays in very, that form so much in this movie, yeah, though. Was. Like that's it its does. primary yeah. form in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And so that brings us to the big point of contention about this movie. Apparently the first, uh, but see, I don't know. This is one of these things. I can't tell if this actually destroys the movie or it only destroys the movie because we're aware of like a post-production thing. But uh, Tom, or Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. Mm-hmm. did the special effects for this movie. Yes, they, did. they did practical uh, effects work as best that they could. Actual, you know, like they did in the original, like Botine did in the original right. 82 movie. Uh, the director was like, we're going to go practical because this is a sequel to The Thing. Right. Uh, and test and- screenings and all that apparently said uh, modern audiences aren't going to accept this. And so they hired Amalgamated Dynamics, maybe, or maybe, a, well, no, maybe uh, they are uh, no. They dynamic. are amal- uh, Tom Woodruff Jr. and Al Gillis are amalgamated dynamics. That is their company. Okay, so they hired a visual effects, a CG yeah. visual effects company to create CG versions of the monsters right. to lay over the top right. of all the designs that Tom Woodruff Jr. and Al Gillis had had come up with. Um, they just use those for the CG versions of that. Okay. So the designs from them are still all within the movie, but they're the practical uh, effects are replaced by all CG. Right. And the CG was being worked on up until two weeks before this movie hit yes. theaters, and yes. it got right cut down from this. an R to a PG thirteen real hard. So is yeah. this a PG thirteen? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. There's no blood. Did you notice, like, when people get stabbed and, like, no blood comes yeah, out? No, there's, there's blood, there's, there's blood there's everywhere blood, else but, besides... The, but you don't think, see it but, come out of people, right, and that's, that's how the rating is That's the differentiation, yeah. yeah you, you can see, see blood, a blood puddle, but it's, but it's different if it yeah. comes yeah. out of somebody. Yeah, that's you how see, that like, a right. blood-stained shirt, but nothing actually... Right. I yeah. mean, a few people, like, even Aaron Christian Olsen gets stabbed in the stomach, and blood Again, it's CGI. It seems like... I don't know. Well, uh, and there's some fucks. Yeah, there. You there's can't. Like you can't make sense of the MPAA. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any no. sense. Yeah, Just, you weird. can't hurt yourself trying yeah. to think it's about weird that. Weird in this. Maybe they're. Maybe they saw the finished effects and they're like, "This is very cartoony. We can give this a PG." It is cartoony. <laughs> like it's. It looks like a fucking PS2 video Re- game. It remind me, was was when they op- when they actually cut it open? Was that scene the only practical? That was it's, left in. It's one of the only ones. Um, the autopsy scene. Yes. Is, 
Um, yeah, that was gross. Like, that's that was really gross. Yeah, that was gross. Even there, there's CG augmentation of the corpse. I think that first yeah. scene where they sure. cut oh, it yeah, and there's yeah, all yeah. the guts yeah. and they cut through, that's right. practical. That's and they what show I'm the talking actual about. Human yeah, that's in, what... within well, is yeah. CG. Obviously. But that's what I'm talking about. When they initially cut it open, like that was really gross. I'm like, man, right. that's solid practical effects. Like, why why didn't the rest of it play? Is right. what I'm wondering. And there's there's practical throughout. You just get it's just I think it's just small moments. Like when yeah. they first find the thing under the house, right? Or under yeah. the thing. Like there's a lot of those practical in there until mm-hmm. they start going wide and it starts shooting through people's hearts right. and all that stuff. So there's little things that are still practical. But I mean, I guess yeah. this is the thing that you have to consider when it's a new movie, right? Because I think they said, or I think I read an interview with the director where he said that basically, you know, with the practical effects, it looked like an 80s movie. And sure. the studio was like, okay, but, you know, we're doing, this is a movie for 2011. And yeah. so yeah. now it is going to have to look like a 2011 movie. So, you know, <laughs> but this is the thing. Like, But it's looking like a 2011 movie. I mean, this, is that a good thing? Yeah. But even with the CG, because like, I mean, maybe they should have pushed it back a good six months to a year. But like, even Which with the CG, it made it look dated at its October. time. Yeah. Like, like even with the CG, when it came out in October, it, it looked dated immediately. So like, that was all for naught, basically. Like, it, so, it already looked dated. So. Yeah. Somebody should have been smarter. Like. People working on this movie, they should have known, like, if you're going to make this movie, you should know the reputation of the thing, of John Carpenter's The Thing. And well, the big reputation the, Didn't you say of it, he was, like, a huge fan, right? Right. But we're yeah. saying that this was taken out of his Yeah, because he was he's the first time to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he it's has no, studio, he has no pull. Yeah. After he Ain't delivers it, he right. shoots it with the effects guys yeah. who are like, yeah. we're doing the thing. And the studio goes... Yeah, that's not what we're putting in. And yeah. yeah, and the studio, and I'm saying this for like, the studio should know better. The studio never knows better. No. And they don't never give a fuck that way. if they know better. They but if you're, if you're doing something that is uh, associated with the thing, you have to realize that the effects of the thing are what people, it's one of the big reasons people love that movie. Is because of what they did in that. Mm-hmm. And to, if you're like, and like we said throughout this movie, if you're not going to do it better then, you know, what are you doing? And to do the CGI that they did in this movie, like, you can't do that. You're automatically, like, bringing your movie down a level. If it's if you, it's obviously less than the practical effects that they pulled off in that movie. If mm-hmm. you're just going to replace mm-hmm. it with CG, like, what, what are you doing? But this is also, but, uh, but this is what I'm saying, how you back yourself into a corner yeah. to a point where, like, I mean, I've ultimately, maybe we come down on the side the movie shouldn't have been... They shouldn't have considered doing it because sure. you can't do it justice because in the contemporary setting, you know, when the kids go to see their movies, you know, the practical effects to them are going to read, you know, like old fashioned or you just can't pull off some of the yeah. stuff that the script tells you that you have to do, you know, or something yeah. toward the climax of this movie where you've got this thing tumbling around and gigantic, you know, gaping uh, jaws, you know, hanging out of it and all that stuff. It's like maybe you can't pull that off practically in a way that uh, sells it. So, have you any of you seen a movie called Harbinger Down? Nope. Uh, I have not because the reviews have not been nice to that movie. <laughs> it's not a good movie. Yeah. I'll just tell you I've seen, right uh, I was doing a lot of research today, so I saw a lot of clips from that movie. Okay, all the monster clips? Yeah. Okay, well, then you've seen enough, so we can right. ha- yeah, yeah. talk about this a little bit. Yeah. But this was so Alec Gillis and uh, Tom Woodruff Jr. said, you know, for fans of practical effects, we're going to make, they're going to crowdfund a movie that's going to be all 100%. Uh, well, I didn't even think they did 100, percent but yeah, you know, so, they're no, going to do a mostly practical effects monster movie like mm-hmm. the thing takes place on a boat with Lance Henriksen in it. Yeah, Cra- they crowdfunded it, they made it, and so I mean, you've seen the effects work. That's what we're kind of talking about. It would look like. I mean, obviously, yeah. that's on a lower budget than sure. a big studio. Yeah, right. Because they didn't get a lot. There wasn't a lot of funding backing this movie. But do you think that 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 what you saw there? Uh, would compete with, uh, you know, the sophisticated modern audience who's seeing Marvel movies one week and then you go see the thing the next week. And, you know, if it had the effects from Harbinger Down in it. That's my question is, I mean, you said it's a shitty movie and that's fine, but but how were the effects? Like, are they, how did they 
work for you? With a movie like that, it's hard because of the way the the whole look of the movie uh-huh. is ripping is off not, the thing. Right, but, <laughs> but just the way it's filmed, and I don't know what it is, but it looks it's not it's not filmed well. Okay. Like the effects look pretty good, but the whole entire film is not done well. Okay. Like whatever they chose to shoot on is probably digital. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever stock they used, whatever whatever was going on, like the whole thing diminishes the effects that they used in that movie. Okay. Because you can tell, like, um, when you have enough budget to make it look like a Hollywood movie. Sure. Yeah. It's that combination with practical effects that I think is. Uh, what they were missing. Cause, okay. Yeah. Or you need a better editor or you know, lighting but cameraman or something. Because really there's like yeah. a scene where a guy does, you know, because it's a, they pull a thing up from the fucking bottom of the ocean floor. It's frozen. <laughs> yeah. It melts. Yeah. It's a thing with squiddy little, you, you know, yeah. air hoses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It turns into people. And, yeah. And uh, Guys, I just we don't remember. Need to keep making the same movie. We can make something but else. It's also, yeah. it's but I wonder from- if it was because they were trying to prove a point. They're like, they we were. Got, our work got. That's what I'm saying. This was this was a fucking like no, you fucked with our with our movie with what we were doing. We're gonna actually make it our own way now, and And we're gonna show you that people will love that more. This is the big like you know, and look, they crowdfunded the thing, and it's just it. It's not a good movie. But it also <laughs> proves that they are not directors. Yeah. Right. They are not writers. Yeah. They do a specific thing very well, and I appreciate that, but there's certain things that they don't. And yeah. I, that's that's where the whole like combination of, like you know, it's filmmaking. It's everybody comes yeah. together to make this stuff. You can have solid effects, but that's not going to carry right. your movie. If you're lacking in certain other areas, yeah. it's going to make your movie look exactly. bad, no matter how well your effects are or how practical right. they are. And mm-hmm. that's the downfall of Harbinger. Day. Yeah. I keep going back to uh, like Guillermo del Toro is a director who uh, understands the limitations. Like he understands the strength of yes. practical effects and the limitations. Right. Of he them. knows where it starts and ends. Yeah. Yeah. So he can augment now, you know, with the CGI stuff, he augments his practical right. makeup with the CGI. Right. And I, you can't tell, you know, I mean, I'm looking at like, you know, the Aquaman guy from uh, from Shape of Water and I'm yeah. like. It helps to have I the great Doug Jones I've, underneath it all. Too, right. you know? But I'm Very saying true. that his yeah. eyelids blink and yeah. all this stuff. And it's like, is that uh, I can't tell if that's, that's true, CGI yeah. or Very if that's true. an animatronic. Yeah. And, and it's the same with his characters in Hellboy. Uh, well, that's in what Hellboy I was going to say. Also. I've never seen the full the full movies of Hellboy or Hellboy 2 but I've seen enough clips and I've looked into enough stuff where he does a lot it, the, the combination of practical and digital is it's awesome it's seamless, seamless. it is mm-hmm. it is seamless <laughs> yeah. and it's wonderful because you can't you see things that are like I know that's fucking real and then you see things just like I don't know if that's real but it mm-hmm. looks fucking real like he d- he, he gets, gets that it. line he gets it he yeah. knows that yeah. line where he can yeah. go and where he has to go beyond and he does it extremely yeah. well yeah but that's I, so rare nowadays it's so but that's rare. so rare but this is what I guess kind of where I'm I'm wondering where this is at it's like is that something like you would figure that the 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 no how on that the mm-hmm. person who knows how far you can push it mm. is the special effects guy yeah but yeah. it's Why not, not. it turns out to yeah. be it's Guillermo del Toro the director yeah. right so when he brings his special effects guys on like he has to be dictating like this right. is as far as we're going mm-hmm. with this and then we're going to go CGI with this because we can't fit the you know you know animatronic rig in, underneath the helmet and the guy's mask that he's wearing right. or whatever the hell right. Um, so we're just going to do that with CG and nobody will know, but it seems like the effects guys want to do everything in, in practical, right? Mm -hmm. right? In camera. And it's like, maybe, and I can't believe that I'm actually saying this, but maybe, uh, (laughs) I mean, unless, you know, you shoot it with the, you know, it's your camera angles and your editing Mm. to disguise the fact that like, this is a person with a bunch of rubber, you know, limbs attached to them bouncing Mm -hmm. around or, you know, Doing something, maybe it looks fake to modern audience. Maybe it would look fake to you. Maybe we give 80s stuff a leeway because Uh, we all saw Rawhead Rawhead Rex. Well, certain people, and that was a rubber suit that was bad. That was bad. I think we, I think there is obviously there is a, uh, 
uh, a certain amount that we do give a leeway to these movies. Like, we know it's from the 80s, so we're just like, all right, we can discount. It's so quaint stuff. that they had such little technology back then. <laughs> <laughs> Look what they pulled off with it. Right. So you're saying that's what but, it is. Yeah. It's right. more like, my God. Right. They had nothing. They had air hoses, and it looks like an alien thing from another planet. Right. Well, yeah. that's what I was saying. Like, we do give leeway, but I challenge you to go look back at the original thing. And this all goes back to the argument. This is like, you can't judge a movie based on what, you know, kind of what it's associated with. So you, um, judging the new thing based on what mm-hmm. the old thing did, it's kind of, you know, you're, you're fighting a losing battle at that point. Yeah, but, but, but it positions itself that way, though, right? Sure. Because it's saying this is all the gaps you've wanted to know about that movie right. you love. So it mm-hmm. put itself in that position. We didn't right. put it's, it there. I mean, yeah. it's a, I feel it's a lose-lose situation for this movie. So why yeah. did they even take the gamble? That's yeah. what I don't because understand. Because it's a name and they think it can yep. make But money. was it profitable? That's true. And that's why it's not called, well, he's going to... I'll, I'll say, I'm curious about the box. I'm like, but that's why it's called, it's not the thing returned or before the thing right. or I whatever. I saw it opening it's weekend thing. and I saw it too right. Like I said, previously on the thing. So. Like, did they, did they not think it was comical? Like, I'm watching this movie and I'm like, this is almost funny. Well, I think that because it was being worked on up until two weeks before its release, no one really saw the thing all the way through. You I'm know? talking about like, the, the visual effects? I mean, like, the... the yeah, specifically... Uh, we. The um, there was the scene when you see, it's the full thing, but it, it's got the head. You know oh, what scene was that? It was the guy said or the girl's the two head? heads, or the one head, the one head. Okay, but the girl's head or the guy's head because it had, yeah. had some multiple yeah, points in this movie. I, I, she, I <laughs> upside down head or track. right side up head. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> it's, it's it's like running at her. It's got the one head. I don't know. But it, I think it's the when the woman lures her into the like storeroom to find the keys. Oh, that was after that. But either way, like, it fucking reminded me of Slither. I'm like, yeah. this is like a comical, like, yeah. this, but like this I said, is I, supposed to be I, scary. I but it's, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think because this was such a shit show behind the scenes that, like, no one really saw the full movie until it was everyone was seeing the full movie. You know what I'm I saying? So. Like, I don't yeah. think anyone because saw it in progress. You yeah. can find it online. There's clips of uh, Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis, like, giving interviews on the red carpet for this movie. And I don't think That's they know awkward. what they're about to get into oh, again. Wow. Because but they know they've been fucked over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell because they're not the happiest people oh, in the wow. world. That's because, awkward. Because, like you said, the movie was not finished until really close to release, at least like two weeks out. Mm-hmm. So they don't know what they're getting into, but they, they're not happy about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like with Rick Baker and the Wolfman. I yeah. remember that was another situation where he was going to, you know, it's like the, the guy who designed the the uh, American Werewolf in London transformation is doing another werewolf movie now in like 2009. And then he did it. And then he was like, yeah, but they basically use computers to do the transformation now, even though Still I designed, you know, how to do that stuff. Well, yeah, because it's that scene was fucking cool. Fantastic. That was really cool. That scene That's, was in daylight, too. So it was fucking was awesome. Really cool. I was all about that. The budget on this movie uh-huh. was thirty-eight million. No, no, <laughs> I don't see that on the screen. <laughs> oh my god! Do you think it was less? It no, I like feel less? like I, it, or more. Like there's one location. CGI. Uh, well, there's one location in this movie. <laughs> That, oh my god. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. Are you practical, fucking kidding me? Practical effects a lot of at this point but, cost more money. But Mary Elizabeth yeah. Winstead and Joel Edgerton are not A list actors. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not, not yeah. that expensive. Not, not then. Box not office. <laughs> Here we go. Worldwide or domestic? Uh, I'm uh, At this point, Wait, for as yeah, long as guess. this movie's been guess. out, this has been uh, probably worldwide. I'm going to go with how much did it cost? It cost $38 million. It made $38 million. Alec? Mm, 27. I'm going to say like 50. This movie made 31.5. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's, a, that's a failure. Wow. And I went, I, I, I went and saw this. Uh, total, domestic total, gross. Total. Box Jesus office Christ. Total. No, yeah. I, I went and saw this That's like a weekend. rejection. It's, that's people really going, is. you're not fucking with a goddamn classic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I refuse to see this. Right, because it's it's at that yeah. point. Like and then, the 1982 And there aren't any superstars in it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's, maybe that's the thing. If the reviews come back and say, basically, you are watching the exact same movie that you saw. Uh, you know, already yeah. it's a yeah. classic. It like you know, people watch the thing all the time. Yeah, it's coming out on video like every fucking year. It seems like. Yeah, uh, it is the literal. I can just go watch that thing. 
Yeah. It, yeah. Why would I watch? Why this? Yeah. would I watch yeah. this new one? Yeah. Can we talk about the the test? How they test for people in this movie? Because this is where we all uh, were like, "This is I'm done." Yeah. Like this is where everyone is we like off out. board with this movie. <laughs> what is this is where is this where everyone got lost or not lost, but the, where the movie lost everybody? Yes. Or just yeah. like where was you was gave up on this? it. Were you out before? I, yeah. I, I was up, too. When, when were you out? <laughs> When were you out? I don't remember. Movie? It was uh, it was specifically a scene where like somebody they were creeping around looking for the thing, and I'm like, wow, there's like no suspense here at I, all. Yep. There's no suspense. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out, and I'm like, this is the music is telling you there is, but you're not feeling it. No, yeah, but yeah. again, it's Marco yeah. Beltrami. I have nothing against him, but his no, music but he's, here is he's like very pfft. he's a, a yeoman like. He's yeah. just for like get the job done and go home. And I'm it would watching help like if the all... actors were reinforcing what the music was telling you. Yeah, yeah. but again, but no emotion not. in this movie. Yeah, but there's and there's no anger. Like for a guy who loves the John Carpenter movie as much as he does, it's like John Carpenter wouldn't have shot that movie right like this movie. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah, besides the exact plot line, where's your inspiration? Like yeah. I'm not seeing it. Mm-hmm. But the the amazing thing about the John Carpenter one was that there was so much suspense and tension in the blood test scene. You know, you were just waiting for the moment that that blood was going to react. Yeah. And every time, like everyone in the group was like holding their breath. And then letting it go every time. This scene, open fucking, your mouth, checking for goddamn fillings. <laughs> open your goddamn mouth. And you know, we yeah. were talking about while we were watching it. You know, I don't have any fillings. Sean, you don't have any fillings. I have none that are visible. Yes, yeah. so you have porcelain ones. Yeah. So we three out of four. You yeah. have fillings, Holly. Yeah. I think I think I have one. Are they so, porcelain or no? So, I have a new one and an old so one. Holly's okay. pretty much holding us all hostage. Yeah, yeah, point. basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a permanent retainer, you fuckers. So do I. Yeah. So I guess I'm okay because I have a permanent and I, retainer. And I know, but... listener, that you're like, well, stop comparing it to the original. And you know, at a certain point, we will stop. Well, we have. We've thought about this. We've stopped comparing it to the original and looking at this movie on its own merit. We're making these decisions. But still, you compare that to science, and it still doesn't I, make sense. Right. But Just I hold can't up to even, science, and I it doesn't make sense. I can't yeah. not compare this can movie to the original. I can't. There was a moment toward the end where there was a bunch of like tentacled things chasing after her, and I thought to myself, I'm like. Oh, so that's if they made like an H.P. Lovecraft Cthulhu kind of movie. This is the kind of thing we'd have reaching yeah. around the yeah, door I at her. Never, I hope you're never hoping for that. I know. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'm like, this is what it's going to look like. But that was that the only time that I was like sitting there going like, well, I, I would, you know, I was I was trying to distance myself from thinking of it as th- this is the th- they're doing was the it, thing. But how right. was it? Was it the prequel? Was it the moment? Yeah, was it the moment when the thing that can take any shape couldn't reach around the yes, corner? Yeah, that, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just couldn't stretch a few. It was more like inches, inches from her yeah. face. Fucking get her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, I, I left when the characters aren't sharing information like they should be. Just like you discover information <gasps> and yeah. then you don't. Automatically yeah. start yelling it at the Those other cells characters. Cells are alive. Are right Go tell you. everyone. Right. Mary, everyone like, yeah. ex- give give information to people. Yes. Like, let's all like as human beings, yes. as characters, they're not doing things. It's like that when would I wa- help any of it's them. It's exactly like when I watched season one of Stranger Things. Those motherfuckers don't talk to each other. <laughs> talk to each it's, other. Talk to each other. Mary, that's it. That's it. It'll help. Talk to each other. Mary Elizabeth Winstead makes arguably the biggest discovery in all of science. And doesn't yeah, tell yeah. anyone, mm-hmm. and yeah. just goes about her day like nothing happened. Yeah, and even when she found out, like, she's like, "Cells are replicating yeah. his cells." Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like her delivery. Basically. Basically. Yeah. 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 yeah, look at this. Damn yeah. Look at this. So they're not yeah. dead. They're not yep. dead. She tells okay. it to Eric Christian Olsen, who is yeah. useless. Yeah. as a yeah. as a character and nope. as an actor, maybe nope. he's more he's more <laughs> shocked that someone's an asshole. Yeah, exactly. What the hell? No I'm characters think thinking like, logically because they're all their reactions to this. even though they're scientists, so they should be nothing but logical, yeah, but, right? But see, there's a precedence for this, right? Because I don't think like many of the characters in the first film uh, react, uh, you know, extremely to the knowledge, you know, to the idea that there's this thing out there, you know. If not, because I think Blair the, comes up with it, right? To the situation that they're in, yeah, okay, which doesn't feel like this movie. If nothing right. else, yeah. I'm not acting uh, asking for an extreme reaction. I'm asking to you react to the situation you're in at that point. Like yeah. a person, the way a normal human. Yeah, 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 they exactly. do. Which is part of the criticism that was leveled against the first movie for the longest time was that it was like the, yeah, these interchangeable characters. They don't have personality. Mm. But I'm like, you can compare that to this one, mm. and you see where the distinction there is. It's yeah. the, you know that those guys are people. You know, in yeah. a situation, and they're acting like people in a situation, right. and it, they feel more real. Yeah. Than this highly yeah. scripted, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, directed. Exactly. No, like you're version. not going to react to the situation. You're going to react how I'm telling you to react. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
because these people like <laughs> and it's missing the humor too. Like the, yeah. this yes. one's very dour because they think interpret that as being now it's going to be more now scary. serious and scary. Yeah. Yes, but the first one was able to actually like let that off with some levity that doesn't seem right. like you got to have a release for these people. Yeah. Did you guys feel like any of the characters had any personality in this movie? Because no. they all no, I that's was why like, we, we lose none. them within this story real quick. Mm-hmm. That's why I thought you know it's like yeah you got Joel Edgerton you have uh, Akinawe Adewale Adewale yeah. you have him and like I've seen him do good stuff yeah. in other things here they're they're all wasted like everybody's yeah. wasted yeah. in these parts because they have no personality yeah at no point did I care about any of these characters mm-hmm. yeah like at all, all. He, yeah he, like yeah, he's, he's done now. great okay well that also brings you to like you know how this movie you guys even the dog. And you know me Even with dogs. I forgot about the fucking dogs. You know dogs. me right, with dogs. It's such a minor thing at this point. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I was you like, should be freaking out. I was out. like, all right. But it, whatever. The dog is so inse- <laughs> inconsequential and it happens all off screen all with the dog. All off screen. Yeah. So yeah. why do I care if it happens all off screen? You know? That's how I felt about everyone. Yeah. I just don't care. Well, about actually, a lot of things happen off screen. Yes. Well, let's uh, talk about something that does happen on screen. Michaela was alluding to it earlier, but the 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 test, right? So, oh, yeah. So in the in the original, sorry, it's not the original, but the 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 carpenter thing it might mm-hmm. as well be the original. But yes, mm-hmm. yeah. the favorite. They test through, <laughs> the uh, you know, finding out uh, the the all the f- the cells of this thing are all fighting. You know, basically for survival, if you put a hot Fighting needle in, it's going to jump. Yeah. It's a great fucking jump scare. In this one, uh, they determined that they're just going to look and see if people have uh, uh, fillings, fillings because sure. it, it can't, can't replicate create those. inorganic material. It can only yeah. replicate organic material. Right. So it pops the metal out of the body right. and leaves yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, leaves a paper trail, basically. <laughs> Hey, what, I was here. <laughs> but like one of the, the, I think one of the things that you have to do if you're going to make a remake of a movie is if you're going to if you're going to do a scene that was in the original movie, you mm-hmm. have to do like a better version. Of exactly. It. exactly. And there's no tension or suspense to the shit because it's just people opening their mouths, which is kind yep. of awkward to watch. Right, Very awkward. Like I don't like, want to look in uh, your mouth. Right. Are we look? What are we looking for? It's yeah. just like it's not clear. Like the the, the what we're looking the science for is isn't not valid. clear yeah. to the audience. Like the characters may know what they're looking for, but they're also like in the scene. Able to look in another character's mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the audience is not able to do that. But we even don't have a clear directive as to what, like, oh, this is what your thing. You're not. It's not differentiating who we're looking for at this point. But even those characters don't react like normal people. And it's like this is what we're looking for: people with fillings. And then you've got people who have fillings who just aren't going to open their mouth, or they're like. Kate, the thing. I don't know it's why like- you would be asking me this extremely personal thing. About opening my mouth and showing it to you. Yeah. This is. And then she my, op- and then, but I do have feelings, so I'm human. This is yeah. my greatest problem with this movie. Everyone in this movie has seen or knows of a spaceship and an alien and has seen something come to life and eat another person at this point. They also have the are, autopsy just, of nothing else. Right. And they are disbelieving of anything after that point. It's just like, you saw aliens. You yes. saw things come to life and eat people. Yes. You should be all for whatever people are saying because you, do, at this point, you yeah. should be like, I don't know what the world is right now because right. I've seen aliens eat people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, look at my fucking feelings. I'd be opening my mouth as wide as I fucking could at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, certain things. Open your damn mouth. <laughs> yes, certain things should allow the characters uh, uh, to believe other things are possible, and none of them want to believe anything is possible at this point. Even though aliens are fucking real and uh, you know, it's happening, a bunch and going of voodoo on. bullshit. Yeah, right. You believe I, any I, of this, yeah. Blair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> The characters are not acting the way they should based on previous things that have happened. Even if you think about it just from, like, the, like, basic human survival instinct, they're not even acting on that. Exactly. I don't understand what they're operating exactly. on. Like, yeah, what do you want to do? Yeah. Like, what is your... What, what, what What's your primary do? objective yeah. here, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, something. Clearly, was, no one was ever given motivation during this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I would give to have, like, a Jeff Goldblum kind of, like, cocky motherfucker that thinks he knows everything somebody, in this movie? Yes. Somebody with you an know, attitude yeah. or a perspective yeah. or speak, something they want to I do mean, or they a already, feeling they have. They already had, basically, a shot-for-shot Jurassic Park scene. They, so. Oh, God, that scene. <laughs> I was joking, but then... <laughs> I was joking, but then it was exactly that. There's the, the raptors in the kitchen scene happens 100% it happens. the thing, mm-hmm. and yep. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Jill Edgerton in the kitchen. Which is the other thing we get into is the motivation of the alien, and the only thing we have 
to go based on that is our previous movie, and we know that the alien wants to replicate, and yeah. he also he's not a confrontational alien unless he like has to be. Right. Yeah. But he would this, rather hide. Right. He would rather that's hide. How you survive. That's then how you people survive. don't burn you with fire. Right. Exactly. If yeah. I hide, nobody's going to burn me. Not this thing. He don't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants to. He first of all, he starts a process of replication, <laughs> but then he just is like, I'm a monster now. He yeah. said. He said, I want Eric Christian Olsen's face on my face. Yes. Yeah. That's a what, pretty man. What is the benefit I want for face. two faces? Why does there this thing need but two? We because need you to tie can. It in. Well, because you have to get to <laughs> right. the scene in the the eighty two movie right. where there's the you know burned body where you run into your limitations as far as filmmakers go it's just like well we've decided what we're going to do so now we're limited by the things we've decided we're going to do Mm -hmm. and then so they go with that instead of like instead of going with character motivation at this point yeah like they've thrown that out the window we don't want to go with that we have to stick with what our what our uh, (laughs) audience coming into this knows where we're going and it's a detriment to this movie. Right. I would rather have them, like, have natural reactions, whatever you feel can be a natural reaction to an <laughs> alien absorbing people and then coming to attack sure. you. Sure. But that would feel more real to me than just like, all right, well, we know we're on this track and this is where we have to go. So no matter what, we got to go there. Yeah. And that's, it fucking doesn't do any service to this movie. Right. Well, I'm glad at least that the makers of this movie, like, were so dedicated to the uh, the memory of the original movie that they left Mary Elizabeth Winstead alive at the end of the film. So thankful because it matters. <laughs> <laughs> it so matters. It, it matters for a sequel, maybe. <laughs> if, we, if we ever got to there, the character we I didn't give a fuck this? about to start with. Yeah, <laughs> great. Glad she lived. Well, yeah, good. She lived. Yeah, I guess Chekhov's earring too. Don't yeah. forget that. Yeah. Joel, Ed- yeah, Joel Edgerton's earring. Like, why did we have to have that moment at the end of the movie? Because you have to have that moment. Yeah, you have to have that moment. moment. After you beat the alien, it still has to be alive. Even though the logic, based on what we've seen before, the logic says if we get to a point where we have a human being and a thing alone, Mm -hmm. like, the thing should have just taken her over. His well, own, at least three things, times in the film. That's what you're saying? Well, that, right? that's, very, well that's very true. <laughs> yeah, but just go like, things, I got you. The thing's whole thing is survival. I want to survive and get out and be beyond this all, all this shit. And so at any point during their whole thing, if she is human, he is thing, he should have like... Because if this thing can just open up and just like send tentacles out yeah. to attack someone and yeah. assimilate them, he should have done that yeah. before being burned alive. Yeah. yeah. Like if that's the choice, I'm going to die or I'm going to assimilate this person, he should have done that. Yeah. See, I think it would have been more interesting if they played that scene without the thing howl on his they, burning. Yeah, they because did. Because did right, she burn right. a real guy? Or, right. But the movie is like, no. nah, we don't care about that. He's a thing. Yeah. Right. He got turned somewhere where it we don't see. It should have been ambiguous at that point. Like, yeah. did she kill a dude or did yeah. she kill the thing? Yeah. That yeah. would have been better. <laughs> Risk was not a priority for them in this movie. No. Colin. We want to make this safe. <laughs> we yeah. want you to know what's going on yeah. Yeah. and not have to think for yourself. Well, yeah. and they want to be able to make us sit through that credit sequence, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is the true. coolest part of the movie. I mean, it really is. Because, <laughs> I mean, because it, I mean, it kind of is because I do like... I mean, I like that connection. Like it's if it, it feels whether it's good it. or not. well, wh- it. whether it's good or not. Like I, I, if you're gonna stop connecting yourself to a better movie. Well, put it, if if you're gonna do it, it feels like you should do that. Like if you've already yeah. made the decision to remake, quote unquote, or prequelize the thing. Mm-hmm. Like what you should do is connect it to the original by. Having all these events happen and then go into have that little sequence that goes into the beginning of the mm-hmm. it's thing. just redundant though because it's like we've already seen that movie so like we know that that we, we know, know that movie we, starts we, with the no, dog we coming know in where it's you know like get there. Yeah. yeah but to have I mean what would what would, how would we feel if they hadn't done that no like, I would have been would, fine with it it going to black with her sitting in the snow cat I wouldn't know because then I'm like how right. come she's not in the other movie because yeah. it, no because why isn't she in it anyways because that's the last we see of her the post credit sequence has apparently, nothing to do with well, her apparently she doesn't have enough gas to get to the Russian state yeah. we, so it doesn't did, wrap does up she what die happens out in the ice I mean we I don't, don't know, know. Ha- yeah yeah I don't know how was her. No, the whole post credit sequence has nothing to do with her. That's why it's so dumb. Like, yeah, why is, did I just watch this whole movie? That has nothing to do. This post credit clearly... sequence has nothing to do with any of these people. Right, with the characters you spend the last hour yeah. and forty minutes with. Like, if you're yeah. not going to involve them in what's coming up next, mm-hmm. because again, they got into a thing where it's like this is what we have to do, 
And at a certain mm-hmm. point, they like cut bait with certain characters and just go with where the movie is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that's why, you know, Lars is just like, we didn't kill Lars. That's like, why he doesn't oh, understand no. English. Right. Because he's got to be the guy. At the, right. like, yeah. Who doesn't understand people yelling at him? Every the day. only uh-huh. person. The only one. Uh huh. Only oh, one in the whole yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> so we've, we've talked at length <laughs> about the thing. And I say that not ironically, as far as dogs are concerned with this Woof. movie. Woof. Woof. Got it. Well, we <laughs> asked you what you thought of this movie, the thing, and you wrote into Did you us. Have thoughts? So we're gonna we're gonna take our uh, take a moment. We're gonna break. We're gonna answer some of your mail, and then we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we really thought in our hardened hearts about 2011's The Thing. But first of all, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. You got a big fur coat on, flamethrower. Yeah. He's been drinking a lot, apparently. Uh-oh. J&B. <laughs> <laughs> drinking a lot of J&B. God, take the flamethrower away from him. He's already flammable as it is. Mm. He's got those natural yeah, oils. Go yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, oils. Uh, we should remind the good folks at home how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. They can get a hold of us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. They can get a hold of us by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or they can get a hold of us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. When's the last time we got an email? Just curious. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. Long Let time. me keep my thing, Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, you could just take the Instagram thing and then, yeah, that's you know, true. It would work. That's true. All right, so about the thing, we got a lot of uh, mail on this one. So, uh, yep, drinking beer, watching movies, comment. It said, I think it's a solid prequel that really connects the movies together. The only problem with this is the CGI doesn't hold up in 2011 when it came out. Didn't hold up in 2011 when it came out. I haven't watched it in years, but I'm looking forward to hearing you guys discuss it. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. mate. Cheers. Uh, DJ Mathis says, uh, I've never heard of it. But I just watched the preview and it looks great. Thanks. I'll watch this for sure. The thing was one of my favorite movies. That one was this one wasn't bad, but the CGI was a shame. I'm sorry. I think I'm coming in in the middle of a. Uh, I think they had a discussion, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, DJ yeah. Mathis like. Oh, they were thinking about right. Harbinger Down. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, let me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. so let me. Uh, this is out of order. Back up. Uh, Geeking poetic said it's been on my watch list for a few years. I was put off by the bad CGI that I saw in the trailers. I heard it was pretty decent though. You guys should watch Harbinger Down if you haven't already. It's a practical effects thing type of story set on a boat. It was made by the Amalgamated Dynamics crew who did this movie. As discussed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rewind by about 20 you. minutes. Right. Yeah. See previous podcasts. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're right there with you. Same yeah, thoughts. Yeah. We're in sync. Yeah. We're in Same sync. Same thoughts that go. we yeah. had before. We got to I, I'm yeah. enjoying these like detailed thoughts, though. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. I love this. Well, no, I, I love this. this. Yeah. We asked you uh, of the three thing movies, uh, which one was your favorite? That's uh, a loaded there's question. There's only one answer. Sure, sure, sure. sure there's only, uh, there's there's only one sure, order that these three movies should be in. That's it. There's only one we're not going to judge you on yeah. you know, when you, when your favorite. yeah well arcadia ace says the 1982 movie is my favorite of the three thing movies awesome uh chris huddleston says this good to hear from you again, welcome Judge. back sir uh says this one's my favorite thing Wait, nah. 2011? Nah. he said just kidding nah. he says it was oh, okay <laughs> you give sean a minor heart attack for a second there <laughs> He says it was okay, but hurt by the use of CGI. I did like the way they tied it into the 1982 version, which is easily in my all-time top 10, if not top five. Uh, Jason Hall writes in. Jason says, I liked it mostly. I was let down by poor CGI and explaining everything Everything. from the Carpenter movie. Everything. Uh, That aside. That's a good point. Yeah. Everything. He says, that aside, pretty creepy and some good horror moments for me. It lost a little in the final stretch, but good ending saved it. Uh, Yeah, down to the red axe in the wall, it explains everything. (laughs) Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in, 
What up, Cots? What up? He says, I he really... He to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not giving full names to anyone. You're, yeah. you just going to... Cots. Make it... All put right. it down a little bit. What up, Cots? Uh, he says, I really enjoy this as a prequel to the original. They paid a lot of attention to detail to line the two movies up. But it must be said, and it has been said many times, that the studio screwed this film by demanding the practical effects be replaced by CG and bad CG to boot. Boo. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, Dwayne Skeleton writes in. <laughs> and he, what up, Dwayne? Uh, he says, as it goes, I was dubious at first about a sequel, but after watching it, I was amazed at the attention to detail. If you watch them back to back, it's seamless. The only problem I have is what happened to the girl. It, yeah, that's what we, we were just yeah. saying. That it's, we have the same problem. Where'd she go? Yeah. Uh, Seth she Lowe. To the station. Well, he writes in and says, I liked her character, but very curious on what happened to her. <laughs> Uh, Bad writing, man. That's what happened to her. Bad writing. Yeah. And about uh, last week's movie, The Meg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. uh, Brent Zemecki (laughs) writes in and says, it is inarguably, inarguably. Oh, Oh, boy. Oh, Oh, boy. Inarguably not a good film. Okay. 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 All right. 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 But at least for me, I thought it was a ton of sharky summer fun. Good. I mean, that's that's the most you can hope for from that movie. Yeah. You know? I'll go with that. That's good. I'll go with it. That is the most you can expect from that movie. Yeah. This is true. All right, so now we're going to go around the room and bring you our final thoughts on the thing. Colin! Sean's <laughs> drunk. <laughs> and eating what and Jack eating Link's beef jerky. Sweet and hot beef jerky. Yeah. Not just any sweet <laughs> so if you're gonna complain, sweet you're going to complain about Sean eating on mic again? Yeah, Sean, Uh-oh. he's Stop eating. eating jerky. He's Stop eating, eating Sean. So good. All right, so. Colin, what did you think about 2011's? The thing. The thing. Um, well, I mean, again, uh, I kind of. There were movies from this period that I. Uh, I'm saying the remake movies, right? Mm. I always go to, I think, like one of the first ones, like they did Psycho in like 1998. Yeah. Then yeah. they did the Texas Chainsaw. Ma- yeah. Which Just is, and then, yeah. you know, Psycho is a movie like nobody's remaking Citizen Kane. No one's remaking The Challenge Godfather. accepted. Uh, <laughs> I will no remake Citizen Kane. <laughs> got no, like, what's, what's the line on that one that you got to remake? Like, well, the they're not remaking Jaws, right? I mean, there's yeah. certain movies that you just don't fucking go near them well, because just, just it's a it sacrilege. Right the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we thought that for Halloween. We thought Halloween right. was one but of But Halloween is one of those movies. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of those <laughs> movies. True, Colin, you're right. The, uh, yeah. the Exorcist, well, I guess they haven't remade that yet. Um, but... I think, and Psycho also, obviously. But I think the thing, the Carpenter version, it supersedes the Christian Nyby, the 51 version. It is one of the great science fiction horror movies of all time. I think it's one of the greatest movies of all time, right? Uh, I mean, because I have an affinity for that genre, probably I'll place it higher, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's one of the, the uh, perfect film, almost. Uh, so anybody who says I'm going to make a prequel to one of the greatest movies of all time you're laying down a fucking challenge yeah. and you should think theor- it think it is a gauntlet seriously yeah. about what you're intending to do here what you're trying to do what you think you're gonna do <laughs> i think they wanted to experience what it was like to make the thing i think so it's a fan that so much we had to I suffer for their make- sandbox yeah and yeah. the studio was willing to bankroll it because it was, you know, hey, people remember would the you title. Not take that opportunity. I would. I, I mean, I <laughs> wouldn't make it something the public needed to see. I might make it for myself, but I don't know if I would. Like, it's but the same thing with Rob people, Zombie. You got people telling you, like, you can't do that. You're not going to do that, and we're not going to let you do Here, that. Here's the thing, though. With, it's the same thing with Rob Zombie. You can make movies all you want. Doesn't mean we need to see them. <laughs> but I, have, I often wonder. We don't what, need to see your movies with your wife and every leading. But role. I often you wonder know? what I would do in that situation when when made that offer. Well, because you're going to sit yeah. there and go like, but he well, at least if I do it, it, it'll yeah. be done the way that I want it to be done, mm-hmm. and it won't be ruined. Right. right. Well, if you think that working for a studio, you're an idiot. I'm just going to interrupt and say, doesn't Colin look like someone who would be cast in a thing movie? Yeah. Yeah, you is. would be in. You're like a perfect fit for a Norwegian, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm there you go. Hollywood you take note. The There's next. your Halloween when, costume. Just right. get a big fur you coat. Should be, yeah, you yeah. Should I get the Norwegian thing, the, the, the poster yeah. coat. Yeah, yeah, I think so. The, the furry thing. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Uh, or at least the, the dude in the helicopter shooting at a dog. Mm-hmm. I can pull that you off. Seem like you shoot yeah. a dog. All right, so yeah, I mean, basically, 
<laughs> we hijacked Colin's review. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Colin. I was. I've seen this movie now three times. I saw it yeah. in the theater, and I came out of it going like, Meh, "Okay, I saw this." And it wasn't very good. I watched it again several years later because you know you gotta like make sure that your first opinion, right. you know, you change, right? Uh, and I didn't like it. And so tonight, man, I think that was why I had had it like halfway through this. I'm like, fuck, this movie's boring as shit. Yeah, it's it just is. boring because I've seen it already. It's called the thing. I think this is the thing. When you remake the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think there was a generation of people who hadn't seen the mo- the original movie. Right. They'd heard the title, but they hadn't seen the movie. I think the thing is different. I think people have seen the thing. Yeah. And that's why the box office was so poor for this re- you know, remake prequel, because people are like, I've fucking seen this movie already. So um, it does help you. Here's why the, the thing uh, 2011 actually works. Uh, it works at showing you the or what genius at. at what it works at yeah. is the showing you the genius by contrasting the, the directorial and the, the <laughs> filmmaking style. It's like, it makes you appreciate what John Carpenter was able to pull off in the first one so much more, mm. you know, like, Oh my God, that first one really is a fucking movie classic because I've seen them do it <laughs> again yeah, as right. just a movie. Right. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen John Carpenter do it. We've seen just people just do it as a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like, ah, yeah. So I wouldn't recommend this at all. Like I, you know, it's like there, there's the thing. Yeah, hey, you can check out the thing from another world. That's a pretty good movie. But there's the the classic is the John Carpenter movie. See that? Don't see this. The video game's okay. Hollywood. <laughs> you um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it simple. I think we've really covered everything about this movie. Um, I will say that. I went into this saying, oh, I've never seen this movie. And about 45 minutes into I looked at Michaela and I was like, I have seen this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. It's that memorable. That's, yeah. that's exactly like, it. It is that movie. That's like, ex- oh, I have seen this. That's exactly it. This movie is so goddamn forgettable. It's so forgettable because you've seen the movie you want. You've already seen it. That's the one you're going to remember. And this is just an afterthought. It's like, you know what? This is just a waste. It's all the the good. It's all the goodness of the first one, like summed up with just nothing nothing that makes it good it's like it's it's <laughs> no the, added value. yes it's the it's you know parts of the it's the plot it's the story but it's not it's just a shell of what you really loved about the first movie and yeah no it, it's awful it's so boring <laughs> it's so no i agree with you. it's so boring like i was falling asleep during this thing like i didn't actually fall asleep but i felt like i was falling asleep but yeah i i can't I can't even defend anything good about it. Like we all love the thing, the first one, the good one. This is bad. I don't recommend it. That's it. I don't recommend it. You have a lot to answer for, Sean. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> this movie has no business existing. This movie, it really doesn't. It like we have we had the perfect version of this movie once already. Yeah, uh, and it it sucks that we all had to like because some adults wanted to play in their childhood sandbox. That we had to watch this. I hate that. Nothing enrages me more than when Hollywood just like lets spoiled kids have their dreams just because they want them, you know? And that that's what this movie reeks of to me is like, I've always wanted to make this movie, so I'm going to make it because I've wanted to make it. Not because I have a good reason to make it or not because I'm going to, you know, expand upon it or enrich that kind of world or that lore, yeah. but just because this is what I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And like, we've all gone through that phase. There was a whole fucking TV show called Dawson's Creek about a character going through the phase of, I want to make the movies I love. Yeah. But, you know, we all, it, that doesn't mean it needs to be big budget movies that need to be released that we see. And, the, like the characters I feel like they they speak in such a mumbled and hushed tone because no one has confidence in anything in this movie none of the characters have confidence no one has confidence in the writing no one has confidence in this in the CGI or the animatronics there's just no heart or or confidence or belief in anything they're doing mm-hmm. and it's just it. There's nothing enjoyable about it. There's nothing scary about it. The no. CGI skin stretching looks like fucking bubble gum. It looks terrible. Um, we we didn't talk about it, but we were talking about it a lot when we were watching the movie. You can see they've CGI'd their cold breath when they're breathing. Yeah. And once you notice it, you can't stop noticing it because it is constant. Uh, this movie sucks. I saw it in theaters to like a near <laughs> to like a nearly empty theater, and I yeah. yeah it, I saw it opening weekend, and it was basically empty when I went and saw it. Um, so yeah, hard pass on this movie, mm-hmm. Sean. 
Yeah, I remember there were probably like three, four people in the mm-hmm. theater when I went and saw this movie opening weekend. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Um, I mean, I brought this tonight because, you know what, like Colin said, like I saw it once when it came out in theaters, I saw it another time, like maybe a year later, be like, well, what, you know, maybe I had an off reaction when I first saw it, and I'll give it another shot. And then the third time is when I saw it tonight. Um, this... <sighs> It's a mistake to go into this. Like, wh- it's like nobody who wanted it. It's like the people. No, you who- had it. It's a mistake. Yeah. It's a mistake. Stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> the people who were making this movie, it's like they didn't realize what they were watching when they saw John Carpenter's The Thing. It's yeah. just like, and the biggest sin, uh, or, a, well, I mean, a couple of the biggest sins, if like, is to be boring. It's, mm-hmm. it's like the biggest sin to making a movie. Yeah. And if you're not going to do it better than what you're than what came before you, why are you doing this? Right. And this movie fails on both those levels. Mm-hmm. Um the only thing maybe it has going for it is you're curious to see how a prequel will connect to the original. Mm-hmm. And that's the curiosity factor that may bring you to this movie. Um it's not enough to make this movie a good movie. Um I brought it tonight to see if it was worth another rewatch. I've decided it's not. You should <laughs> avoid avoid this movie probably at all costs. There's, there's one thing, yeah. and it's John Carpenter's a thing. I'm curious yeah. to go back and watch the original because, you know, it, it, there's enough. It's a different uh, movie, though. It's a yeah. different movie. There's enough but time between why. it. Right, because and that's it's why. Because Carpenter movie. did something different. It wasn't. Right. It didn't yeah. just Carpenter copy Carpenter, the original. Yeah, right. Carpenter did something different. This movie does not. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, it's trying to do the thing. And, oh, Jesus, it's not worth it. No. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you got to watch something again just to, like, figure out your solid feelings on it. And that's why. <laughs> right. And that's why I brought it to him. It's like I need to, like, get down how I really feel about it and Ooh. Was this you revisiting like an ex girlfriend just to make sure you know why we you broke sure up? I'm just like I'm not going back to that. <laughs> this is therapy for all of us. We all yeah. have our feet up on the couch right now. You yeah, know? Well, like, I mean, really. Yeah. Is. and I think if you're gonna go someplace to find the definitive answer on the thing 2011, I think you found it here tonight. You found it. Do not yeah. watch this movie. It won't give you anything that is satisfying. No, it won't. And so you should skip it. Just we have we have it. Yeah. We have the thing. And we we should, did it for you. Don't we, do it. Right. We yeah. did it for you. <laughs> we have John Carpenter as a thing. It is It is the ultimate. It is the thing. It is something that I don't think they can improve, improve upon no. in pretty much any way. So skip 2011 is the thing and just, uh, you know, you don't need that. So yeah. uh, fuck off. 2011 the thing. <laughs> there you go. There it is. <laughs> fuck right. off. Well, that's... That's, that's it. pretty that's decisive. That's thing. So that was four. It is four a nose. hard pass. Hard, hard pass. Second week in a row of universal <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah. Universal yeah. don't. Because yeah. you know, sometimes you're just like, I wonder. And then you're like, I don't wonder anymore. Yeah. So, well, maybe we can is. change that next week. There's hope when we watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin. Colin, what are we going to choose next week? I know this order is a little messed up, but... <laughs> it's back on track now. It's back on track now. We're, back We're bringing track it now. back. We're going with... Colin, Colin, what are we watching next week? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm Uh-oh. hoping, hoping right. that this rescues Uh-oh. the summer because okay. it's not over yet, right? That's very Colin, true. Colin, to be honest, you've been crushing the summer, though. You have nailed the you've summer. Been, yeah, you've been good. crushing really. it. <laughs> Now the pressure. Now, now yeah. change his thought of what yeah. he's gonna think. Now I'm like, oh, shit. oh shit. He's like, next week we're watching the thing, the good one. <laughs> <laughs> next week we're going to finish off K- uh, Michaela's summer of canon okay. because what? Uh, it, it what? didn't go so well. So I'm like, we need to bring. It, we're watching ten minutes yes! with Charles Bronson right. yes, yes, in a yes, like yes. slasher hybrid cop movie yes. with Bronson in Please it. Please redeem. Canon. I may have yelled yes. too loud. I'm sorry, listener. I'm very excited. <laughs> I've heard more about this in the past month than I've ever known well, about this uh, movie. Well, because Scream Factory Scream is going to be putting this out. releasing this movie on Blu-ray. And yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see this. Yeah. It's something else. It's baddie, kind of. So, oh, that's fine. Uh, that's yeah. good. I may crazy. go over well, may not. Well, I don't know. We'll find out I'm next nervous. week. I'm nervous. Not going to lie. No, I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm yeah. open to great. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's next week. It's like week. the one Charles Bronson movie we need to watch. That's right. That, yeah. Probably. Uh, <laughs> so next week. That's next week on this show, the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then... The basement.